Stop! Don't bring those plants inside. But I have to bring it in. It's a gardenia. It'll die from the frost. It's full bugs. of bugs. What do you mean, bugs? Yes, bugs. Ew! All right, calm down. That's not necessary either. As winter's icy fingers begin to creep in, it's that time of year again where your plants need a warm and cozy haven. The one problem with that is that the bugs in your yard are looking at your house like it's got a vacancy sign flashing in neon. So whether you're planning on bringing your green friends indoors or cozying them up in a greenhouse or a hoop house, I've got some bug busting tips that will help you leave those unwanted critters outside your door. And if you've already brought your plants in, that's okay. I'll tell you how to evict those unwanted insect invaders. I may look ridiculous in these glasses, but before you bring your leafy companions inside, you want to channel your Sherlock Holmes and investigate your plants. Check the leaves, stems, and soil for any signs of bug damage. If you see any signs of damage on your plant, it's a sign that you have some unwanted guests that need eviction. But more about that in a minute. If you do find pests on your plants, don't be fooled by their tiny size. These suckers can wreak havoc. Wait for that perfect chilly moment. Don't rush to bring your plants inside at the first sign of cool weather because the chill and crispness in the air is a natural bug repellent. Wait until your plants can confidently say, we're freezing out here before cozying them up in your greenhouse or bringing them indoors. Just be sure to get your plant friends indoors before your first frost. I like to try to start this process about a week or two before my first expected frost date. Another tip is to dry out your plants just a bit. Overwatering is not a sign of love. In fact, it's a surefire way to attract all the wrong attention. Bugs don't thrive in dry conditions. So by letting your plants dry out, those bugs will move on to find moisture somewhere else. You want to be particularly careful of fungus gnats. I had a battle with those that was epic. Those tiny annoying insects are like the party crashers of the insect world. Once they get in, they're impossible to get out. So if you already have fungus gnats in your plants, you may want to consider getting some yellow sticky traps. Using yellow sticky traps is an effective way to keep the gnats off of your guest list. We're all about selective exclusivity here. If you do find that you have some pests, neem oil is a magic elixir. Neem oil is to plant pests like garlic is to vampires. It's your secret weapon. Neem oil disrupts the feeding and reproductive cycles of many insects, leaving them to reconsider their life choices. Just one word of caution. Not all plants tolerate neem oil well. Succulents, ferns, and some ornamentals will throw a fit if you cover them in neem oil. So before you go on a neem oil spraying spree, definitely pick a small area to test the product and see how your plant reacts. If there's any kind of an adverse reaction, you wanna skip the neem oil for that particular plant. Remember, we're trying to evict bugs, not have your plants stage a rebellion. If neem oil isn't going to do the trick, you can bring out the big guns systemic house plant control. This is like the ultimate bouncer for your plant party. This insect control is granular. It gets put into the soil and it is sucked up by the plant. Then when insects bite your plant, they get a nasty surprise. It's like having a murder mystery dinner, but the guests are the victims. Like neem oil, not all plants react positively to systemic insect control. So definitely check the guest list on the back before using it on any of your precious plants. Systemic houseplant control is the nemesis for those sap-sucking insects like aphids, mealybugs, and scale insects. I found this to be particularly effective against spider mites on my gardenias. I bring gardenias in every year. They're one of my favorite plants, but every winter, at some point, I would end up with spider mites. I would use neem oil, which would sometimes burn the leaves. But since using this, I haven't had a problem, so I definitely recommend it. Another benefit of using the houseplant granules is that it will kill the larva of those pesky fungus gnats that we talked about before. Just keep in mind that the bottle's going to look half empty when you get it. I don't know why they package it that way, but they sure do. Now I know what you're thinking. 
you're wondering if systemic insect control and neem oil are safe for edibles like veggies, fruits, and herbs that you may be bringing inside. Systemic insect control is not labeled for use on edibles. It's a pesticide that gets absorbed up into the plant, so you wouldn't want to eat that. Neem oil, on the other hand, is made from the seed kernels of the neem tree, and it's perfectly safe to use up until the day of harvest. You would, of course, want to wash anything well that you're going to be eating if you sprayed neem oil on it. I have two words of warning about using neem oil. First of all, if you have started to let your plants dry out and you see the need for using neem oil, you want to well hydrate them first. Any kind of foliage that is drought stressed can be burned by neem oil. Also, and I know you've heard me say this before, neem oil is an oil. So if you cover your plants in it and then put it in the sun, it's going to burn just like your skin would burn covered in baby oil at the beach. That's probably not much of an issue for most of us during this time of the year. But if you live in sunny Florida or if you're going to use neem oil next spring or summer on any of your plants, that's something you definitely want to keep in mind. If you're putting neem oil on your plants, they need to be in the shade at least for a little bit. Now, let's talk about giving your plants a home makeover. Fall is the perfect time to up-pot your plants into sterile indoor potting soil. Sterile soil has no plant pathogens or microbes, so it's a surefire way to get rid of any pests that might be lurking in the current soil that they're in. Plus, having room to expand their roots will help your plants thrive throughout the winter and be ready for spring when those sunny days return. Up potting your plants in the fall is like sending them on a vacation for the winter where they can thrive. Remember, prevention is key when it comes to keeping unwanted insects out of your house. Wait for that perfect chilly moment. Inspect your plants for pests and damage. Employ the magical elixir of neem oil. Use systemic houseplant insect control. Up pot your plants into fresh, sterile soil, and you'll be ready to cozy up together indoors, waiting for the sunny days of next season to arrive. So tell me in the comments, have you ever had a massive bug battle? I sure did with those pesky fungus gnats, but I'd love to hear what you had to battle. And tell me too, what plants will you be bringing in this winter? Do you have a favorite? I always look forward to reading your comments. Thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day.